Hi guys and gals, Rise Geek here, and uh, last weekend I was at London Film and Comic Con. Did I have fun? What a stupid question, of course I did. I played some retro games and some uh, and some new games on some like retro style arcade cabinets which are handmade and they are available for purchase uh, from... Hang on, I just have it here somewhere. Uh, I've got... Oh dear. Uh, bespoke arcades. Uh, yeah, they basically make these arcade machines and you can purchase them. Uh, I will be doing so at some point in the future when I have the funds for it, when I have my own r place, I suppose, with the room to have them. I'll probably get more than one if I could. They are, they are quite expensive, but for something like that, what do you expect? I also got to see some of the newest uh, VR tech in a VR zone, which was, yeah, as always, it's, it never fails to amaze me VR, and I really still want an Oculus just to um, play uh, Elite Dangerous, because I love that game, and the idea of being in a virtual reality environment where you're flying a spaceship is brilliant to me. I also got to meet some of my favourite stars, including uh, Natalia Tenner, Gemma Whelan, uh, Christian Nunn, Steven Burkhoff, and the one and only Tobin Bell. Tobin Bell, sorry if I'm saying any of their names wrong. I also got to meet my favourite author, Darren Shan, and I've been trying to meet him for the last like four years at every Comic Con he's been there, but unfortunately I've never been able to. But finally, I did meet him and I got a book signed, so that made my day. And of course, I got to browse all the stalls, which sometimes have you know unique and uh, handcrafted items, and I got. Uh, this here which is a hand-drawn uh, panel from the Neon Genesis Evangelion uh, comic uh, manga sorry not comic um, and it, uh, yeah hand-drawn on wood and then lacquered and that's the uh, uh. and now is the part where I talk about my issue with Comic-Con uh, because in my mind at least there's not enough people that go for the comics or comic related things um, I'm not saying it's a totally bad thing but I just think it's a shame that something with comic in the title is less about comics than all the other things I mean don't get me wrong I as I said met um, stars and even went to uh, meet the, an author who doesn't even do comics he's an author of novels um, so I can't talk, but I just think it's a bit of a, a bit of a shame. Uh, it's not so much at the London one, but in the Bournemouth Film Comic Con, because I live in Bournemouth, um, at the last Comic Con earlier this year, there was loads and loads of stalls selling nothing but pop vinyls, you know, the little um, things you can see up there. And obviously, I love pop vinyls, I collect them, so I can't really talk. But there was loads and loads of stalls just for pop vinyls, and there's about two or three only that were selling comics. So. That's just my little nitpick. Anyway, with that in mind, I'm always on the lookout, especially at Comic Cons, for independent comics um, that either look interesting or interest me at least in some way. And the best thing about Comic Con is obviously that they, most of them, usually if it's an independent comic, the author or the artist, or sometimes both, um, are there. So you get to meet them, just talk about their work, and then you can purchase the book from them. Uh, you can even get them signed huh, most of the time, so they're happy to do that. But I always try to find one that interests me, and um, and at least buy at least buy one at each comic I go to. Um, at LFCC this year, unfortunately, um, I could only buy one book because funds were limited for me um, this summer year. Um, but I did find two <laughs> that really interested me, so that was a bit of a problem. Um, I met Mosk Chops, who has created uh, Salsa Invertebraxa, uh, a story about insects. Uh, that just just looks amazing, like the artwork. I'm not doing it justice on this video, but it, it look, like I just love. I'm, I'm a, I've got a, some sort of affinity of insects, and um, I just love the fact that it's a, it's a story, it's a comic about insects, but the artwork doesn't shy away from the strange and uh, alienness. Like how how they look, it, it's not Disney-fied like you know Bugs Life something like that. It's bugs as they are, as they're supposed to be, which um, which I love. Yeah, um, I unfortunately, as I said, I didn't have much money, so I couldn't actually afford to get this book. But I have ordered it um off the off the shop online at Peck Pex Pex Sniff Express. Sorry. Uh, so um, check it out, see what you think, and you know, order it as well. 
if you like the look of it. But you know, the other book um, that I found, that I mentioned I had to, was this. The Frogman Trilogy, which of course I got signed um, by the uh, two, two authors, um, writers if you like. And um, yeah, what did I think? Well, <laughs> the Frogman trilogy is a collection of three stories, if you hadn't guessed already, about the original character Frogman. He's like Spider Man, except a frog. I mean, he's actually a frog. Like, he looks like a frog, it's not just a costume. He does drugs, makes mistakes which leads innocent civilians getting killed. He has a really unconvincing alter ego, which of course no one sees through, and unlike other heroes, he doesn't end up getting the girl, but he has no problem spending money on prostitutes instead. Yes, as soon as Mr. Mark Lewis and Matt Fitch started explaining the story, I knew it was definitely my kind of thing. In some ways, the humour is similar to Deadpool, with the adult themes being rather glaring when set in a story about superheroes. Frogman, however, can take it further, mainly because this is an independent comic, and I have to thank my lucky stars that that's the case. The comedy keeps pace with the story, and that actually is more of a story than you might expect from a comedy comic that it makes references to others, more well-known heroes and series. The first story introduces the character, and involves him tracking down the tax man to end his evil ways. Love it. Then in Frogman Returns, our hero is having to put a stop to a monster who is ripping the tits off defenseless women. Say what you want about me, I loved it. And then, in the death of Frogman, our hero must escape hell to take back his life that was stolen from him by a zombie squirrel with the sinister intention of having anal sex with Frogman's dream girl. And need I say more than that to interest you? I heard less and was hooked on the spot. This book is without a doubt my favourite comedy comic I have ever read, and I've read quite a few. Maybe the humour isn't for everyone, and too smutty for some, but if you're like me and you're into this kind of thing, do yourself a favour and give it a go. I will leave a link um, to the publisher's website. This is uh, from Dead Canary Comics. Uh, it will leave a link to the website below in case you want to check this out or one of their other titles. Um, I'm personally interested in reading Fitzroy, which is a collection of six stories said 1950s Britain, where there's poison in the air and tea has become a sort of currency. Just love the idea of it. Uh, I've also ordered that along with another book called Reddin, I think. Reddin? Yeah, Reddin, which is about a bounty hunter on a quest for revenge, um, which is always good. Um, but you can expect a review on both of those as well. I just have to point out that I know the, the colour in this video, or this part of the video, is really weird. I think the cam is breaking or is broken, I'm not sure, so I'm going to have to sort that out. Um, but yeah, so, you know, just put up a bit. I, there's nothing I can do. I had to record this today and I'm all blue for some reason. Not sure why. But it's turned Rias in the background. It's turned her hair blue. Not happy with that. I should just finish by saying do you find the idea of a book where a zombie squirrel has sex with a human woman disgusting or wrong? There's something wrong with you.